What I wanted to do is just unpack exactly what we're doing in Lesson 13. Our learning target is super wordy. Um, what else is new? So here's our learning target. Use fraction benchmark numbers to assess reasonableness of addition and subtraction equations. Holy moly. First of all, what is a fraction benchmark number? A fraction benchmark number um, is just a number that's really easy to work with, such as 0, 1 half, or 1. So that's all we're talking about there. To assess reasonableness of addition and subtraction equations is just asking, does your final answer make sense, yes or no? A few of you are missing this step, so I'm actually pretty thrilled that this um, lesson is included in module three. So for instance, today I was working with people in group and you were, you know, we were working on expressions such as seven and one half minus six and three fourths. And after all of your hard work with like common denominators and unbundling and all that jazz, you're coming to me with answers like seven and three eighths. I mean, first of all, Okay, great job finding common denominator. But if we're subtracting six and some from seven and some, how in the world are we going to end up with seven and three eighths? So this is an, an important lesson because it's going to force us to just pause and think about it and think about, hmm, is your final answer reasonable? And if it's not, like you need to go back and figure that out. Um, so we're going to work on that. We're going to can hopefully have some more time dedicated on Friday to unbundling those numbers but when we're doing subtraction. But I just wanted to give you guys a brief overview as to what's going on what's going down in math for the next few days. So tomorrow, Friday, we're on lesson 13. You guys know that. Monday we come back. Um, we're going to, I don't know why I drew a six. We're going to lesson 14 ourselves. And then Tuesday, um, I think a lot of you can predict that we're on lesson 15. And then Wednesday, we are lesson 16. I think I was planning on, I talked about giving our celebration of learning um, on Wednesday, but that is incorrect because that's not going to work. So we're going to do lesson 16 um, slash review on Wednesday, and then we're going to do our COL on Thursday. And you guys know our COL is just um, one page, and it's just involving traditional algorithm of addition and subtraction. You guys have been working so hard on it, so I know you're up for the challenge. Uh, so let's check out a few of these assessments of reasonableness in addition and subtraction equations. Okay, guys, let's get into this. We are going to start um, in our problem set for number one. Here we're looking at, um, are the following expressions greater than or less than one, one circle the answer? So we're talking about our learning target in lesson 13. We're using those benchmark numbers. Again, the benchmark numbers that we want to keep in mind are zero, one half and one whole. So here's how we're going to use those benchmark numbers. Um, one half, already a benchmark number, so we're not going to change that. We're thinking about the sum. Um, is it greater than one or less than one? Okay, so now we're going to transfer two sevenths, which, which is not a benchmark number. We're going to transfer it into a number that's closer to a benchmark number. So this is going to take a little bit of reasoning and a little bit of rounding. So two sevenths um, is... It's not exactly a half. 3.5 over 7 would be exactly a half. So we're going to say that 2 sevenths is actually closer to 0 than it is to 1 half or 1. So let's think about 1 half plus 0. Is 1 half plus 0 greater than 1 or less than 1? Less than 1. Okay. So don't overthink this. We're just using a little bit of, we're just manipulating the number slightly so that um, we transform transform them into benchmark numbers. We're using some estimation and rounding just to um, try to gauge where the sums will end up. Um, let's look at 5 eighths plus 3 fifths. So neither of them are benchmark numbers yet. 5 eighths is pretty close to 4 eighths. 
4 eighths is another version of 1 half. They're equivalent fractions. Okay, so I have 4 eighths, 3 fifths. 3 fifths, interesting number. It's, it's close-ish to 1 half. 1 half exactly would be 2.5 over 5, but we're not even going to go there. So we're going to go ahead and say um, that 3 fifths is closer to 1. So we're looking at 1 half plus 1. 1 half plus 1 is going to be greater than 1. So there's a lot of kind of fudging here. This is like a very gray area that we're operating in. Whenever we're doing estimating and rounding, it often is. But the only reason why we're spending time in this lesson, you guys, is to use logic and think about, hmm, my final answer is that logical. Like I said, today in group, some people were submitting final answers that were not logical. And you're not being punished, but I just, I just want you guys to slow down and think about, Hmm, is this is this logical? Is this valid? Uh, let's look at just this one. One and one fourth minus one third. So one and one fourth. Um, as far as benchmark numbers go, we're going to say that it's pretty close to one. One third. As far as benchmark numbers, we're going to say it's close to zero. So one minus zero isn't greater than one. It's not less than one. It's just one. So I'm just going to go ahead and insert that as an option um, because I feel like that should be there. Um, okay, so D, three and five fifth, I'm sorry, three and five eighths minus two and five ninths. Three and five eighths, I'm sorry, benchmark numbers can go beyond um, what we have here, just in increments of one half. So we have one and then we can do one and one half and then two and so on. So three and five eighths, hmm. Three and five eighths is pretty close to three and four eighths. Four-eighths, as you guys know, is an equivalent fraction to one-half. Um, minus two and five-ninths. I mean, it's not really close to much, but let's just go ahead and round it up to three. So let's think about three and four-eighths minus three. Uh, three minus three is zero. Oh, gosh, who's calling me? Um, I don't know who's calling me. Um, sorry, guys. Three and four-eighths minus three is just simply... 4 eighths, which you guys know is an equivalent fraction to 1 half. So we're going to say this difference here is going to be less than 1. Okay, so let's, we'll look at a couple of more examples and then we'll kind of just call it a day. Found one more that looked interesting enough to talk about in our video. Um, so keep in mind, we're still like kind of fudging numbers, estimating, rounding to see if our answer is reasonable. So, uh, I thought this one was kind of cool. So let's take a look at it. The only thing is though, we're going to switch out Jackson for, hmm, for, I know what we'll switch Jackson out for. Uh, we'll switch Jackson out for Carl, the lady hamster, which is also our secret word. For those of you that missed the story about Carl the lady hamster, see me tomorrow, or Tanner, and they, he and I will be happy to fill you in. Okay, so Carl the lady hamster, we're, we're imagining, right? This isn't real life. We're being, we're being a, a little funny. So Carl the lady hamster need, needs to be one and three fourths inches taller in order to ride the roller coaster since well what should we use here so Carl um, is actually a, a gentleman hamster not a lady so we'll keep we'll keep the pronoun he so since he can't wait he puts on a pair of boots so imagine that hamster putting on boots that add one and one six inches to his height and slips an insole inside to add another one and eighth one eighth of an inch to his height will this make not Jackson, but Carl, appear tall enough to ride the roller coaster? Interesting. Okay, so Jackson needs to be, I'm sorry, excuse me, Carl. Carl needs to be exactly one and three-fourths of an inch, but remember we're in lesson 13, so we're dealing with like some kind of fuzzy numbers. We're going to go ahead and round one and three-fourths of an inch to two inches. So he needs to be 
two inches taller to ride that roller coaster. He is a very clever hamster. So he finds some hamster boots that add one and one six inches to his height. We're going to go ahead and round one, and since it's only, since it's only one sixth of an inch, we're going to round it to just one. That's a benchmark number. We're going to use one as a benchmark number. So he uses his hamster boots to add about one inch, one inch, not inches, about one inch to his height. And then he has these hamster insoles that add one eighth of an inch. One eighth of an inch, sorry to say, Carl, isn't much. So we're going to go ahead and round one eighth of an inch to nothing. It's closer to zero than it is to one half or one whole. So Carl, in his infinite wisdom, has added one inch using the boots, and Carl has added zero inches. Sorry, we're rounding. Keep in mind, Carl, we're rounding. That's what we're doing in Lesson 13. So Carl has added... Mm, about one inch to his hamster height. And Carl, I'm sorry to say, needed two inches to get on that roller coaster. So Carl, you're going to have to keep brainstorming new ways to add a little bit, bit of height to your hamster, your little furry hamster body. So unfortunately, Carl, I'm, I'm sorry to say that the answer here is no. Carl does not... up here tall enough. Sorry, bud. Maybe Tanner will give you, give you an extra treat. So, more fun to come tomorrow. I hope you guys have a great night tonight, um, and I'll see you Friday.